meet. But for some reason, God's allowed me to go into so many different countries, and because of that, I have an open door to take men who I know are far uh, wiser and far more educated and spirit-filled and everything than me, and to get an open door for, for training of, of men. And so the greatest need on the mission field, the greatest need on the mission field is systematic theology and Christ-centered expository preaching. You see, everyone talks about missions. Oh, we need to do missions. We don't need to do any more missions than we're already doing. I mean, we're the most mission-minded bunch of people on the face of the earth. The problem is most of what's called missions isn't biblical. It's just absolute silliness. Missions has become atheological. And that's wrong. Missions also is now directed by the sociologist, the anthropologist, and the cultural expert when missions must be directed by the theologian and the exegete. It must be based on scripture. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. I'll give you two examples. Years ago, a young man from seminary called me when I was in Peru and he said, Mr. Washer, I want to come down and work with you. I just want to give my life away in Peru. And I said, um, tell me about your theology. He said, well, my theology, is the that's not really my strong point. I, I just want to give my life away. And I said, well, tell me about your, your studies and preparation for preaching. He said, well, you know, Mr. Washer, you know, I, I just want to come down there and give my life away. I said, young man, no one in Peru needs your life. So don't come down here. They need someone who can open up their mouth and tell them about God. They need God. Another example. I literally just can't understand um, the ideas that we have about missions. Sometimes I'll walk through an airport in a foreign country and I'll see 40 American teenagers or college students all with the same t-shirt on. They're a Christian group going to save the world. You add it all up, they've spent about $80,000 for their week and a half mission trip. If it's 40 of them. They've come down, they've preached a gospel that's not really the gospel at all. They've done puppet shows, they've run around, they've acted silly in their silly clothes. And then they go back and tell everybody a thousand people got saved when in fact probably almost no one got saved because all those people who made decisions don't show up at church the next Sunday. And it's just an exercise in futility where that same amount of money could have put 25 Peruvian pastors on the field for an entire year who speak the language preaching the gospel 24 hours a day. And so we do all kinds of missionary activity and most of it is quite useless because it's not based on this one truth. Missions is not about sending missionaries. Missions is about sending the truth of God's gospel, of His word, through men and women. So if, if you've got a passion for missions, I don't care. I don't care. That means very little to me because everybody's running around with a passion for missions. The question is, do you, have you dedicated yourself to knowing God and knowing His Word in such a way that when you go on the mission field, you can open up your mouth and instruct people in the things of God. If you're not a scribe, don't go to the mission field. I was talking to a dear brother who teaches theology and systematic, systematic theology and um, expository preaching in China. And he said that the best that he could discern, doing as much statistical work as possible, studying as, as many missions and missionary agencies and such, that he estimated that 4% of all missionary money and missionary activity actually went to the proclamation of truth. It's all about evangelistic campaigns and how many people got baptized and doing all sorts of events. And most of it, when the smoke clears, means nothing. On the mission field, what do we need? We need, we must plant biblical, sound, local churches. 
And we must endure with those churches until they are autonomous, they have a biblical eldership, a leadership, and they are able to propagate themselves and the truth that they believe. It's hard work. And it's not done by doing silly little campaigns and sending a bunch of young people over to do nothing for a while and come back and tell all their stories. If you want to be involved in missions, then let me give you some advice. Stop gathering together in a bunch of little groups and running around and doing your Jesus thing. Open up your Bible, get good books, study the scriptures, memorize chapters, organize your thoughts into a systematic theology, know what you believe, be able to defend the truth, understand something of Christian history, become a teacher of God's word, and then go to the mission field. Until then, stay home. Stay home. Because we don't need any more of the mess that's already out there. Now that sounds so very hard, but I'm sorry, it's true. I'm just saying what almost every other missionary on the face of the earth wants to say, but isn't quite dull enough in their brain or have hard enough ahead to say. Any questions? <laughs> yes. Well, you know, all the stories you hear about China, oh, the question is exactly, you know, the work that we hear about, the marvelous work we hear about in China and 30 and 40,000 people getting saved a day and, and the great work and the power of the church and the, the supernatural nature of the work and things, is it what's really going on? Um, first of all, no one should deny that there has been a, a marvelous sovereign work of the Spirit of God in China. But much, many things have been exaggerated, been greatly exaggerated. I mean, you would think from the stories that you hear that you go over into China and everywhere you go you're going to meet Christians, and that's not true. Secondly, um, because of a great lack of teaching, the church is immature and very open to syncretism. It's very open to influences, cultic, half pagan, um, a mixture of Christianity and Chinese religion. Now, the Spirit of God has done a work, a great work. I, I don't want to take anything away from that. But the Spirit of God also uses practical means. The greatest need in China is a very sound, straightforward, defined, systematic theology. The training of pastors in, ex in hermeneutics and expository preaching. How to study scripture. The uh, doctrines regarding what is a local church, how does it function, what is, its what, does it, what is the leadership of a church, how does it function. And so, again, if I could flood China with something, I would not flood China with a bunch of young guys with backpacks on doing extreme missions. I would flood China with godly pastors who've spent their life in the Word of God, send them over there to teach pastors from the Word of God and from pastoral experience based on the Word of God. So um, the church in China will, will always be weak until it's built up uh, with truth. Um, there are some movements right now that are very encouraging getting the scriptures out in China, but also the publishing of, of good books. Uh, a dear friend of mine, um, Roger Wheel from England, who has a, a little uh, basic uh, doctrine book that he's put together. That's been published now in, in, in Chinese and things like that. So that's, that's the great necessity. You know, my, listen, when, when all these groups come back and they tell you, you know, 10,000 people got saved in Russia or 1,000 people got saved in Puerto Rico and they're all excited. Listen, I've been there after the groups leave. 
you can't find any other converts. Missions is hard work. It's not done with a mission trip in a week and a half. It's done by going to that country and giving your life. Do you know to plant? I would have to say, after my own experience and talking also to strong, sound missionaries that have given their lives on the foreign field, you plant a biblical church in ten years, that is a miraculous thing. It's hard work. And it requires just great endurance in the Holy Spirit. And so um, we just really have to be careful about the way we do missions. Another question? Yes. 